It's the end of the year and the beginning of a new one. Possibilities are endless and everyone's making plans. You look at your instrument, your computer, your door, or maybe your keyboard, and you think, this is it. This is the year I will fix and learn everything. <laughs> stop, seriously, stop a minute. Because I don't think that's the best way to start a year and I'm gonna tell you why. Hey, my name is Steve, composer, engineer, and lecturer, and welcome back to the channel. This is another issue of Ask the Lecturer, where I share some stories and some questions from my students in the classroom to help answer some of the questions you may have at home. Recently, we wrapped up the year, of course, for the end of the year and the new year coming, and a lot of the students were starting to look at what was in store for them in the next year, the classes they would be taking, the projects that they would be doing, and some of them started to shake. How can I possibly write that much music? How can I possibly keep up with all that theory? I don't feel like I can possibly get all of that work done in that time. It seems impossible. It seems hard. It seems beyond me. Everything they were saying are completely natural fears, particularly when moving on to bigger, more technical, more demanding things. Dramatic in nature, maybe, because of their apprehension for the future. But that apprehension makes it seem insurmountable. So of course, it naturally feels really challenging. The truth is, they can all succeed and do really well at it. They have the ability, they just just need the confidence. They need to believe in themselves. So why don't they believe in themselves? Well, when I asked them what they were worried about for the future, this is the most common thing that they all said. I don't feel like I've learned enough over this last year. How can I possibly learn everything that we need to next year? Again, it's something that's so common. I hear all the time. Like, honestly, if I had a dollar for every time that I heard this, I'd probably be rich. I'd still probably be recording these videos, but in a much swankier studio. <laughs> Swanky studio. Anyway, so how do you overcome this? How do you get that self-doubt out of your head and march on with your life? Well, I'm gonna tell you what not to do first. So it's tempting at this time of year to sort of make a list, a laundry list if you like, of all the things that you wanna do next year, all the things you wanna achieve, all the goals you wanna set for yourself. Goal setting isn't bad, I definitely don't wanna say that. I love goal setting and I think it's incredibly important for growing and developing. You decide on what you wanna achieve and how you wanna achieve it and uh, an idea milestone of when you wanna achieve it by. These are all good things, but due to the whirlwind nature that is the end of year festivities, you'll most likely be making these goals probably not from the ideal settings, maybe from a couch or a club, while you're trying to relax or while you're trying to cut loose, and you'll be making goals possibly as half-baked as you are, you know? That's what I sort of class as a New Year's resolution. It's not something that I would recommend, and I think it is the worst thing that you can do to start your year off. I kind of class these New Year's resolutions as something a little bit separate from the goal setting that you would normally do throughout the year. It's more of a flexible promise in many ways, uh, something that you might not be able to stick to and keep to throughout the year. It's that promise that has the best of intentions, but not really enough direction or any drive per se. You feel this pressure of the, the calendar year turning over to the next one and you, and you want to start afresh, so you want to do something, a promise to yourself that you'll do something better next year. But you haven't really thought it through and there's no real aim. Seriously, I think that this is, in my opinion, the worst thing that you can do at the start of the year that will really not set you up well. Throughout the year, quite early on in fact, you'll usually find that the wheels start to fall off the wagon and your drive for this is not really there anymore. That drive to reach your goal is just, it's just fading away. This will cause you to sort of feel like you're grinding to a halt and that's not going to be a great motivator to get going again. And that could be for a number of reasons. Those goals could have been too lofty, too big, too general and not very specific. And frankly, you just may not have the motivation. Sometimes we decide to do things that we just, we don't actually have any real drive to do. We just think that we should do it because, you know, it's, it's something healthy to do or something great for our development or whatever. So, Instead, something that I've been doing for I think about eight years now is something I like to call New Year's Reflections. Maybe because I'm quite nostalgic, or maybe it's because at the end of a project I love nothing more than just to sit back and go, ah, oh, nice. But I like to instead reflect on what I've done and what I've achieved across the last year to help me gain a bit of perspective and to see how far I've actually come. Thinking back to my students, for example, one of the hardest things that they can't see and that a lot of people can't see is just how far you've actually come along the year. Noticing slight incremental change is incredibly difficult. It feels similar to what you did yesterday, so therefore it must be the same today. But 
If you check back over a week or check back over a month or a year, the change starts to accumulate and you're much more likely to notice it. You can see just how far you've traveled, just how much you have learned and how much you've grown and developed. You're further along to where you want to be. So all of my students, and maybe you at home, they all feel like they haven't gone very far towards that goal that they want to get to, towards that vision in their heads of of the success they want to achieve. Often because it feels like that goal is so far away that they've got so much to do to get there. Yet you have come so far without even realizing it. You look ahead so much at where you want to be that you forget that you need to look back as well at how far you've come. For example, after this video is done, play the first song that you did at the beginning of last year and now play the latest song that you've got. The change will be noticeable. It works for any creative as well. I often love when visual artists, for example, they they go back and they take a design that they did you know a year two years ago and they redo it using the skills that they've now developed the skills they've accumulated in that time and it looks so much better because they've got so much more they can do to make it the vision that they always wanted it to be. It's a demonstration of how much you have improved over this time. And honestly, some years you'll do more than others. Some years will be quieter and slower. Some years will be much more intensive. But looking back over the year allows you to gain that perspective on just how far you've traveled along that road. Ultimately, by doing this, you're gonna avoid feeling terrible about all the things yet to come and all the things you have to do to reach your goal. And instead feel elated at just how far you've come and how much you have done. How much you've grown, how much better you are than you were a year ago. So in that spirit, I know one thing I am definitely looking back on over this year. As part of my New Year's reflections, I will be checking over what I've achieved here on YouTube. And it has been a smashing year. I may be small at the moment, but I'm approaching about 500 subscribers and I value each and every one of them. This YouTube channel is starting to grow into an awesome space and a community is starting to evolve around it. And I'm, I'm loving that, absolutely loving it. I started this year with only about eight or so. So it's been absolutely awesome to see you all jump on board. And I've been loving the wonderful comments, the feedback, the questions that people have been throwing my way in the comment section. It's fantastic to read and awesome thing to be a part of. I'm flattered to receive some absolutely amazing comments from some people that I've never met who have joined in on this channel from around the world, which is absolutely fantastic. And I've learned actually a lot from some of these comments as well. Always sharing your quick tips, your favorite things to do in your music production environment, sample editing or whatever it is. It's been fantastic to see all of that dropping into the comments and joining this community space. Seriously, thank you for joining. Thank you for coming along into this and creating this space online and allowing me to share that with you. It would be really easy for me just to focus on lofty YouTube creator goals of thousands of subscribers or compare myself to some other channel that has hundreds of thousands or millions of subscribers and go, well, I'm behind. I'm not achieving that well. I've only got a few hundred people following me. But by looking back over the year, reflecting on where I've come from, from only eight to now almost 500 of you here sharing this space with me, it is truly amazing to look back at that and know that this space was nothing a year ago. It puts me in a positive headspace. It allows me to think about what I could achieve next year more accurately and with a better frame of mind when I'm approaching it. By looking back rather than just ahead, I've been able to ground myself and understand what I could do next year with part of this channel. And I'm, I'm sure it's gonna be amazing. I hope you follow along for it. So, Happy New Year, everybody. I hope your New Year's Reflections takes you on a pleasant trip down memory lane and shows you just how capable you really are. You can be sure that this is a massive year for this channel as we only can go up from here. Don't forget to subscribe on your way out so you don't miss out. There are so many exciting things yet to come. Until then, I will catch you in the next one.